Yo, what is going on, you beautiful people? My name's Hyder Sam, and today is all about Frigg. We're gonna be talking about Frigg's kit, her teams, how to build her, her matrices, her relics, her synergy, her stars, and is she worth it or not? All right, guys, and oh my goodness, if you haven't noticed by now, this S3 skin, in my opinion, is worth it, but, you know, don't spend money if you don't have to. Quickly, I do want to say I do stream on twitch.tv forward slash HydroSam. If you're interested in that, link will be in the description or in the pinned comment. But without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so let's just show off her basic normal attacks. Um, we'll talk about the ones that are important, but uh, here's your normal attacks right here. And then bam, if you hold it, kind of leap up in the air, like bring him up, and then I guess you can, you know, do that. You're not going to be really attacking in the air with Frigg. What you're really going to want to do is your multi-slash. That's going to be your quickest way to do DPS with Frigg. I'm show off right here with these little guys. Now let's talk about the best part of Frigg's kit, and that is basically her elemental skill, or I guess just her skill, weapon skill. It's still in Genshin Impact mode, I don't know why. But this Fimble Winter Slash, look at it. It has very high percentage, and basically when you're in the field, it's gonna just make you have unlimited sprints, as long as you're Frigg. It's gonna last for 25 seconds. There's gonna be five seconds where you're not gonna be in this domain, which is fine because it lets you switch off a of frig and do other stuff with your other teammates. And one thing to note is that you do gain 25% extra shatter when using a frost weapon only while you're in the domain. It actually makes frig not a terrible shatter user. So before we do it onto enemies, here it is right here. And I think if I fast forward is enough, we can do like 30, 31 sprints without hesitation. And of course, if you do attacks, I think it decreases from like 30 to like 25. The way I like to think about it is basically for every second the frost domain is out, that's one attack. So whenever I'm doing like my rotations and stuff, I can look at the time right here track five seconds and like right now I can be like okay i got five dashes left before this domain disappears and basically that's what happens that's the way i like to think about it when i'm using that domain and I, when i look at the timer the only frig will get regain her stamina or her sp sprint whatever but when you switch to like someone else like subasa no more dodge cooldown but as soon as you get one you can switch back to frig and then like your stamina will be recharging in the background, I guess. I show it off to enemies right here. Crazy amount of damage. And like even sometimes without thinking about it, you can like, uh, you know, just trigger Fantasia without even thinking about it. And it's just going to create great opportunities for you to just switch off to other characters and just, you know, do your thing with your rotations. One thing to know about her elemental skill is that she can actually charge up your weapons decently the more enemies there are around because her elemental skill has such a wide AoE. And then because she gets an increase of shatter in her frost domain, I think she's kind of underrated as a weapon charger and as a weapon shatter on your team. Honestly, she's kind of like a flex role. I mean, look at all these enemies. Let's see how much charge we can get right here. Pretty decent, pretty decent. But, you know, if you really need to shatter, then, you know, just switch to someone like Meryl. So let me just charge up a little bit. See, I charged up a bit, and then I'm going to switch to Meryl. And then you can do some nice shatter there if you needed to. But it just depends who's on your team. And then you can switch back to Frigg and finish off the enemies after they've been shattered. The last and most important thing I want to mention about her elemental skill is that it's one of the few moves that actually has iframes whenever you're initiating the animation. Let me try to prove it to you right here. See? Did not take any damage. Has such a long iframe window. Like, it's a crime not to use it to like dodge enemy attacks especially this stupid boss right here i hate this guy and if you thought thimble winter had a high attack percentage her discharge ability has more but let me show you how it looks like when you unleash it Destroy. bang they just freaking get destroyed the only bad thing about frig's discharge ability is that it does have a long animation and you know it takes quite a bit and leaves you vulnerable there's no iframes all right guys let's talk about frig's teams so her best team is for sure an ice team guys her resonance just allows her to boost up everyone's damage and she must have an ice partner in order to take advantage of this frost resonance so that means currently her best partners are either meryl 
or Subasa, and I guess Coco Ritter. But basically, this is the dream team for PVE. DPS Resonance, preferably Subasa. Ascension level one, advancement one. Something I don't like about Subasa Star level one is that you need to use like all your dodge attacks in order to get full stacks. But the good thing about Frig is, you know, it doesn't matter if you just waste them. Like one, two, three. When you do Frig's elemental skill, you don't have to worry about that you lost all your dodges because they, you know, they're coming back. You don't get wasted whenever you're in a frost wave. And then you can just switch back to Subasa and just uh, reset your stacks and then just keep going of course if you have Subasa star level three then you really only need to do one attack in order to get like all your three stacks back but you know once you do get your three stacks back as long as you can maintain Subasa stacks you know you don't have to reset all three of them then you'll be okay once we have all our stacks we do frig's elemental skill and now we have charge and then i like to i like to use Subasa's element or discharge ability and then like frig right here Dang, break that shield with that discharge. I'm telling you, it's pretty good. It's pretty decent, guys. And then just keep going. Do Subasa again. And that's going to provide the off-field damage for me to use for my Frig. And then, well, he died. Because there's just so much damage that's being pumped into him. So that's why I think Frig's best PvE partner is Subasa. You don't even need to break shields with Meryl. Because, you know, Subasa and Frig can do it on their own but of course Mero doesn't hurt at all to have on this team but if you really do need another healer i guess you can switch to nemesis or even coco ritter if you want like full ice team but when we're talking about pvp then for sure it is Mero over subasa you can replace subasa with nemesis that'll probably be the best ones just so you can have the heals and the stunning effect and all that good stuff Meryl and frick together in pvp Man, they're a dangerous combo. Very, very dangerous. You're going to be losing out on a little bit of charge. But like I said, you know, you can charge with Frigg. You know, she has enough, you know, damage and AoE to get you those decent charges. Especially if you just keep spamming her bash attack right there. You can combine Frigg's discharge ability to trap your enemies. And then Frigg's domain so that you can just be there just dash attacking them until they literally freeze to death. So one more thing to note about a pve team say you don't have subasa and you do have Meryl. put in a support like nemesis or even like coco ritter and this balance resonance will definitely come into play a lot because it's going to increase your shatter by 20 percent that's pretty huge because you're already getting 25 percent from the frost domain I, I believe it's 25 percent before correct me if i'm wrong let me see really quick sorry guys yes 25 percent and then you get another 20% from the balance. That's an extra 45% in shatter. Really helps out Frig. And it really, really just makes uh, Meryl just one of the best shatters in the game if you have this team going on. Especially if you have star level 1. That is something to note in case you don't have Subasa, but you do have Meryl. This is a great team to have for PvE. So in conclusion, you don't need to have both Meryl and Subasa to have a dream team. But you do need to have one or the other in order to just... Take advantage of Frigg's kit. Moving on to matrices, guys. Her best recommended matrices, especially if you're using her as an on-field DPS, is probably going to be two-piece Samir and two-piece Crow. Two-piece Samir for sure. And you can replace Crow with a matrices that isn't really talked about that much that's good on Frigg. And that is Huma. Hitting targets with dodge skills, which is basically all we're doing with Frigg, inflicts bleed, dealing damage to 15, 19, 22.5, 26 of attack every five seconds. So this is definitely a really good one to play pair with like Samir or Crow matrices and of course the second or third choice however you look at it is Frigg's matrices but the thing is you have to go for the four piece the two piece isn't good enough to justify I need to go for this matrix it only increases frost attack when you're switching between frost weapons and right now we're gonna test if it's only if you switch off of Frigg or you can get it back on Frigg when you switch from like Subasa or something but if you do want to go for it you know the four piece is great when you're unleashing frost domain enemies within the domain will receive a lot of frost attack every second so it's pretty good but i don't think uh you know if you're especially if you're free to play you should not go for it you're better off farming for huma or even samir or crow the ones that are already in the game and you don't need to gotcha for them oh increase our okay so increase frost attack by eight percent for 10 seconds that is our buff but we actually don't have the buff there and when we switch back to frig what happens oh we do get it now we have the buff now it's 2600 instead of 24. We do get it even if the matrices are not on the weapon like Subasa. We'll switch to Subasa. 
we get it. We switch back to Brig, it resets. So it's kind of good for just uh, like a quick swap team. It resets every time. If you are planning to play that quick swap style, like I've been talking about whenever you switch to back to Subasa for her discharge and all that good stuff, then a two piece Frig is not bad. You know, it's not bad at all. But if you're doing on field DPS with Frig and you don't want to switch off of her, then that's when the other matrices come in. But I do like a uh, two piece. Maybe I'll get a four piece soon. I'm not too sure yet, but I think those are the ways to build Frig. It just depends on your play style. And those are my recommendations and matrices but now let's move on to her simulacra trait her awakening whatever you want to call it the trait freeze increased frost attack by 1.5 percent every three seconds upon entering battle the stack can go up to 10 times and then last for five seconds so basically 15 percent extra frost attack wow crazy crazy i think if you are rocking a freeze team probably this is the simulacra trait you want to rock on your team let me go ahead and activate it show it to you guys let me go ahead and enter battle somewhere and uh, there it is we're gaining all the stacks it doesn't last for 10 seconds you know it has to go up to 10 stacks and then it's going to you know last for 10 seconds but throughout this whole time you're going to be having the stacks all the way until it gets maxed out so don't be fooled for the five second timer thing three seconds up to 10 times that's 30 seconds and then it's gonna last for five seconds so you're gonna have a somewhat of a frost attack boost for 35 seconds and of course at the 30 second mark you'll have the max 15 percent and it's gonna last for five seconds and then it'll go away disappear and then once you max it out it goes from 15 to 24 percent and you get something broken look at this right here guys in addition gain hyper body and become immune to control effects within the frost domain i don't have a maxed out but I'm gonna provide some footage from Kekon or Kikon. I'm sorry if I butcher your name, but you're just immune to any type of crowd control, any type of CC when you're in the domain. And that domain's gonna last for 25 seconds. It looks pretty broken, honestly. So I kind of want to max out my frig and get that. So that is something to note right there. It's really good. And it's just, I want to do it. Especially, it's going to help Frig just keep doing her little dodge attacks, right? Imagine you're in the domain and you just keep doing her dodge attacks. No one's going to be able to CC you. No one's going to be able to throw you away, throw you like to the side, or even freeze you. And you just keep spamming that dodge attack until they basically die or, you know, you, basically you do you. And that is really going to help your DPS in the long run. And in my opinion, it's probably better than Subasa's Awakening. I was already leveling up Subasa, but I think I'm gonna just focus on Frig and get her maxed out. So that's my thought process and that's my plan going into this Freeze team or Frost team, I mean. And let's move on to her star levels. I'll be straight up with you guys. I recommend you go for star level one. This is such an advantage. This just gives you so much value in your DPS. Look at this. You gain one Frost in this point every time you deal 550% Frost attack of damage in the Frost domain. Up to 10 Frosty points can be accumulated. When the Frost domain ends, Frostiness points plus blah blah blah. Blah, blah, blah. you basically unleash huge damage onto these enemies it can go up to like 200,000 I've seen like 200,000 it's it's really good it's gonna help your DPS a lot and Frig doesn't have to be on the field for it to do it unleash to do her elemental skill I think the frosty points are accumulating right there in the bottom guys so we have six right now all right and because I have ascension three guys I'm gonna get up to 15 Let's see how much damage we're doing once it ends. No shields, right? Let's see how much damage we're doing. Close to 200,000. And of course, the ones that don't have shield, well, then it did less. Oh, wow. You see that crazy, crazy damage right there. Anyways, you saw about 191,000, and it could have been more. I just didn't have Subasa stacks. I was just focused on getting, you know, the stacks with Frig and just uh, waiting for it. But it definitely could go higher with more buffs in your team so yeah real honest i would say advancement one is worth it is advancement three worth it nah probably not you're just getting like literally just five extra stacks and a little bit of more damage into in, within your frost domain but it is worth because of you know the skin let me tell you the skin the skin is nice you know i appreciate the og og is nice you know you got the non-cyborg physics i guess kind of like a uh, lol but that is definitely not cyborg physics right there and she looks good she looks good without her skin you know her og skin's good but we all know the best one is right here it's so only if you can afford it yes go for the skin i think it looks too good not to go for 
but if you're on a budget guys and you really want to enhance your frost teams then i suggest going for star level one frig but if you don't get it then it's fine you know all you're losing is that extra damage whenever your frost domain ends it doesn't really help your damage whenever you're doing your dodge attacks so that's one thing to note and it sucks that her second ascension only increases her hp growth and not her attack you have to get her attack when you get to star level four and in star level five shattering shields using the frost weapons in the frost domain will freeze targets for two seconds excluding boss enemies of course and then you know more frostiness points more damage basically but you know shattering enemies freezing for two seconds really broken and then at 16 when your frostiness points reach 15 and you're in a frost domain you will get an additional domain of frost 2 that increases frost attack by 12 percent when frost weapons are used but basically whenever you saw me reach 15 points right there just imagine me getting even more dps 12 percent more within all my team because i had a full frost team but yeah those are her star levels guys best relics to use this guy right here whenever your shield gets broken you will get an extra damage percent so if you have advancements on this really good sr for you to use on frig you could also use the cube as well an extra damage percent but it does have an animation so that's the only thing that kind of sucks and then of course the one that i don't have and one of the best ones is this hologram projector right here basically an extra clone that will just deal 35 percent of your damage and if you do get it to advancement 5 50 percent of your damage extra dps it's like having one 1.5 of yourself on the field but if you don't have the advancement level five it's like having 1.3 percent of yourself on the field the last question i need to answer is if frig is worth it and 100 she is worth it for ice teams only if you're gonna be maining ice you definitely need frig on your team we don't know how saki fuha is gonna come to global for all we know she can be nerfed harder than frig was they can change up her stuff they don't give her a frost residence we don't know but frig's utility of her ice domain and all that other stuff that we talked about in the guide i think it's really useful for a frost team and it's gonna help especially for a saki fuha team or whatever okay so definitely if you're going for a nice team if you're gonna main ice definitely go for frig if you're saving for cloudy or cobalt b because you want like a physical or fire team and you're not gonna main ice then don't skip frig and just hang on to your dark crystals and wait for those other characters to come out but i don't want you going and regretting not getting frig but yeah i think that's gonna do it for frig the frig guy and guys help me out here do you want me to show like a showcase of bygone phantasm within this video or would you rather have that in a separate video bygone phantasm wormhole any of the other hard content in the game would you rather have it in this video or make a separate video that way you know i don't have to explain what i'm doing within the showcase like i would just assume you saw my guide and then you see it me doing it within that showcase let me know down in the comments also want to help me out like and subscribe to the video especially if it helps you when playing frig guys i mean look at frig she just looks too good not to play <laughs> she's shaking her head oh she knows what we did anyways i think that's gonna be it sorry i haven't made a guide since shiro i've been sick but i hope that you guys enjoyed this frick guide i love y'all once again have a good day guys you're all are beautiful and i'll see you in the next video